X-Men 97. Did it live up to the hype of the original? Is it entertaining for the new audience? We have all those answers and more after this. All right, guys, we got a full house today. We'll cover all things Marvel, DC, Lord of the Rings, anime, gaming, Star Wars, and more. This time, X Men 97. We'll start with the man, the myth, the Marvel. Will, your thoughts, your feelings. X Men 97. I just want to talk about the opening to start. They definitely took their cues from the original, and I love how it was redone with updated you know graphics again still still some of the same movements with that but the updated graphics so that that you know you got rogue where she flips the sentinel but you see her putting more oomph into it when she does the flip this go around you see characters that weren't in the original banners and stuff like that because you got morph and bishop showing up on the screen so that like it was just really good the music was good like everything was just hype all the hype that i had when i was a kid was reinvigorated as soon as that intro started. And I was hoping it was going to keep it the same way, but they exceeded my expectations and did it better. So absolutely freaking happy about that. The, the brothers that did the music, phenomenal job for making sure that it stayed true to the X-Men theme. As for the opening of the show, look, we open with pretty much, we see Robert DeCosta, you know, he's getting hemmed up and you got the Friends of Humanity, you know, trying to do their thing. Storm and Bishop open it up, doing what they do best, which, again, she tried to talk them down and it didn't work. She immediately went to work. Absolutely loved it, but they got laid out real quick. But this, this is where I got the most hype from. Cyclops came in, being the leader and tactician he is. Like he came through the wall and started working, dudes. I was hyped out of this world. I was hyped so at that. Not only was he using his beams and stuff for offense, he was using it for evasion, getting around, so like that, the maps, so like that. And that last little coup de grace at the end where he just said, nope, yo, that, that did it for me. Cyclops was, was back, and I'm happy about it. But somebody else's favorite character, Cyclops, Tony, I want to know what you thought about that scene because that, that had me good. I mean, if you've been paying attention to me, you have been seeing me smile the entire time because yes wolverine might be everybody's favorite but cyclops is my favorite and when he came in and started wrecking shop i was so happy this was the cyclops that we were missing then when he got captured by the bolerios and i was like oh what are they doing please don't punk him out and then they took his viruses he's like no please i surrender psych <laughs> and i was like that's my dude. That's how, yeah. that's how you're supposed to do it. That I got so hype on that one scene where he's like, nope. And it just, boom. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I also want to cover what you said about the intro. It threw me for a loop at first because, you know, it started off different. I was like, all right, let's 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 see what this one sounds like. And next thing you know, you hear the little drum beat. And I was like, okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm hype again. And then they start throwing in some little techno stuff. I'm like, okay, what are we doing? And then they start introducing new characters. And then they start hype. I was so hyped. I don't understand why I'm so hyped right now. And it, I've seen this like an hour ago, but I'm still hype about this show. It's just the intro. It's just the fighting. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, my God. It was so good to have that. Um, I really think that they did a good job with setting everything up. Brent, you were kind of meh, apparently. You tell me what you think. Honestly, watching last night, because I kind of snuck in a little bit. I wasn't supposed to, but I did it anyway. Watch it you on live stream with, anyway. with those who were there. I watched episode one at the very least as soon as I was done covering Bad Batch. There were a couple people hanging out with me. Thanks for that, by the way, on the live stream. That being said, episode one, did very little to anything for me. The opening was nice. I felt a little bit nostalgic. I watched two and a half seasons of the original and then kind of bowed out. That being said, episode two, on the other hand, I'm kind of into this. I'm kind of slowly coming over towards this can bring in the new fans. The original was obviously one of the greatest animated series of all time in most people's opinions. That being said, Agreed. it just didn't resonate with me. This series... I might resonate home. with me. And I got to say, Magneto in episode two 
everything he was saying, he was spitting facts. He was spitting straight truth. Let me. That man was. I'm gonna tag you in in just a second. And get my last thought in because I'm otherwise I'm not gonna be talking for Mike. anything for the rest of this video because I don't have anything else to add in depth on top of what you guys have. I don't. X Men aren't my jam like everyone else's, but Magneto. He was on point. He was proper. He came correct. And he came honestly. He's like, I don't expect you to trust me. I don't expect you to like me. This is what it is. Charles gave me this responsibility. He even had that one solitary tear for Storm because he couldn't do what he wanted to do. And then he was like, fine. I'm going to honor him. He is the reluctant parent that has just adopted the kid that he didn't want. And he's following Maybe. the Joe Pascal trope, but again, I'm sure the comics will have to be completely duped at some point. But again, before Tony blows up, hit me with it. Let me tell you something. They did Mag Magneto right for one reason. Magneto's monologues are alone worth watching the OG show. And I love that they also allow Storm to have her monologues because that's what was missing from the first one in the comics when storm talks you pay attention mm -hmm. in this one when storm talk you knew it was about to go down you knew it was about to happen and what happens no words which when we get there and we see a master bowl and next thing you know omega level sent mutant detected and all the other people are standing around who comes up off that ground storm and what does she do lays waste to everything she sees everything and it's like that easy for her she's like yeah omega level you right i am bow down to me i loved it it's yeah. but this was so good in the way that they did the setups and stuff okay. so even with the relationships you see everything's picked up so we got gambit and you know he's having his relationship with rogue and everything was we're gonna talk about that and he we're talk about and, that and Gambit is cooking. G's not Don't cooking. Gambit is cooking. That was, a, that was a thing we talked about in the original. When Gene, Gene got mad at Gambit, but you trying to tell her to season her food. It was hilarious. So yep. Gambit was in the kitchen cooking. That was, was great. Jubilee, you can tell she's got a little bit more oomph about her. So at that, which I'm happy about. For again, Shane Frazier. Can we say that they made her more culturally appropriate? Yes. Yes, they did. You can actually look at her and tell now that she is Asian. Yeah, so they, they did a good job. She's standing up for herself against Wolverine about, hey, yo, you know, you scared you scared them off. Um, like, it's really, like, their dynamic is really good. And even with Gene, so with that. And Gene came in pregnant. Allegedly. Right? You know, Gene came in pregnant. And it's just Allegedly. like, yo, this is what it is. Freaking, she's pregnant. They about to have a baby. John Fields going on. All about freaking, like, we. that's what we, me and Tony were waiting on. Let's find out who the baby was. Who's going to be born? As soon as freaking I heard, you know, he, I knew what was going on. I knew it was a wrap. I knew it was You setup. know what storyline they're going I after right now. what storyline they're going with. So it was like, we're going to run it. And so again, that, I was right. I was right. Yeah, so freaking we have Nathan Summers going to make his debut freaking in this series as, as a baby. He's here so that, and then we'll probably get the futuristic version later on down the line. When things start, you know, getting a lot of Dragon Ball Z, you know, it's good. Um, but even with that, all the relationships and stuff that they're building in here, even with uh, Roberto and Jubilee, like they start to get their relationship starting to build a little bit. We're gonna see where that's gonna go. So that I mean, they're the youngest mutants, yeah, the moment. youngest ones. So they're naturally gonna, you know, bond each other, having fun, all that good stuff. Uh, we see Morph. We got to see his original skin, like so he has his human version that he uses, which I thought was pretty good. They showed it in the intro, and then they showed it again later on. But Morph and Wolverine, they 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 have their best buddy thing back, and that's something that Wolverine sorely needed. He loves it. He yeah. loves it. Yeah, like that. Like when he he turned into saber tooth, and they're freaking. Bruh, I around. fell out because Logan started smiling. Like, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, like, yeah, let's go. Like, right. So it's it's like, like, okay, you don't want to. You don't. I'm, I hit him with two bags of chips. Like, come on, let's go. Let's fight. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what you need. It's, it's great. That, that, that's that's friends. That's that's that's, 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 that's good stuff and stuff. Morph. Let's talk about Morph. His transformation. Morph is hilarious. He is hilarious. Morph, Can we Morph say he's dangerous? Oh, absolutely. Because even when they showed in the intro, and they showed him still having the, the sinister effect kind of thing going on in the intro and stuff like that. So it's like, we're going to wait to see where that plays a factor. But 
fact that he changed into what Blob, Colossus, Psylocke, uh, Lady Deathstrike, like Sabretooth, like. And I mean, he was doing it during during battle, so that just lets you know that Morph is and have their abilities. He didn't just turn into him; he had their abilities. Yeah, freaking bouncing off a freaking Blob, pulling out freaking the the steel of Colossus, like yo, he was going in. So like, I absolutely loved freaking Morph. Bishop. Because remember, we talked about in our last one what we needed. Well, what I expected, I needed the fight. I needed action, and this gave me, gave me all. I, I like okay. All right. Like, speaking of fights, the, the first, the 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 first big fight when they came to go fight Master Mold. That's what that. Yes. When Cyclops came out, he was like, "Yo, everybody good? Hey, gra- everybody good? All right, I'll see you on the ground." Hey, man, that's the greatest superhero landing ever. Yo, ever it is. Hi. That shit, that hi. was great. Yeah. So, and then at the end of it, you got the to me, my X Men. Like, yo, you Cyclops was personified so good. Yeah, it did. So, yeah, so it did. I, I think that this show is really going to like have a lot of twists and turns for us. But again, they are not lacking on the action and they are making sure that the characters can stand out and do their thing. Now, and they're getting, they're, they're flushing these characters out real early now. Oh, yeah, real like early for that. So, let's talk about some of the stuff that was flushed out. We got freaking the 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 love triangle right now, freaking between Gambit Rogue and Magneto. Gambit and ha- y'all that don't know, they Magneto and Rogue did date in the comics for yeah. for a moment, so y'all know this. It is true. You gotta remember they they already had a connection from before. So like I say again, this is something big. So that that Magneto, now- Magneto is one of the few people that she can touch, touch. and not drain his power because he has that magnetic field around him. So. That's gonna be a whole big thing. So that Gene the Cyclops supposedly leaving the X Men. So that you know, not Gene. You know, raise, raise for uh, yeah, let's get to to raise for kid, and then at the end we see Gene walk in. Say, like, I need the X Men. Yeah, you know, I need the X Men. So like that, and then we look over. So and again, I already knew what was going down. So like that Goblin Queen, freaking the cloak, Madeline Pryor, you know. That's who it is. So this is where you know stuff's coming. Sinister was known for having these these different things, these clones, all this other stuff going on. So now the storyline is in full effect as far as what's going down, what direction we're going. We got to now figure out this situation. Magneto again, he had his freaking trial, so he's got his relationship with you know every every one of the X Men in some type of way. Because again, you got Wolverine, you know. Just don't like don't it. Like him, so that, that freaking Gambit don't like him now because you're taking this girl. Cyclops don't really care took for him his, to come and take girl. What's going over? You know what's going on with everything. You took his whole X Men and stuff like that. You got the Friends of Humanity freaking who want Magneto's head. You want the government who don't trust Magneto. So he's dealing with stuff from all angles, just period. And freaking even with that, that brings in the entire thing with the Executioner, and this shows his relationship with Storm as well. Because we already know the Storm was the leader of the Morlocks for a period of time. Like, that's where she was. Magneto had already freaking talked to the Morlocks and sent them to Genosha. So now yep. freaking, there's that connection stuff there. And now freaking with what happened to Storm with the Executioner taking her powers, supposedly permanently. Allegedly. Allegedly. Now we got to figure out, you know, what's Magneto going to do? Because he, he withheld from freaking murdering everybody. Like, he was ready to murder everybody. And he held back, shed that tear for Storm, like freaking Remitch. Like, again, that tear was shed. And now, freaking, we're going forward with him. Like, he's got to face everything. So now, not only had he had to fight, you know, get pretty much against everybody's against him, so like that, but now he's got to fight his rage even more for what just happened to Storm. Because Magneto is always, always like, I'm here to protect my people. Mm-hmm. He couldn't protect Storm. And now his turmoil is tenfold. Yeah, because he wants to honor Charles, but now he's like, I should have just killed them all, which oh. he could have. He could have he could have murdered everybody at that place. Yeah, easily. Without a question. And I I love the scene when they when when the government went to try to arrest Magneto, thinking they had him all cornered and they oh. had well these guns, and he just looked at him, and then next thing you know, the helicopters came in and said, Now what? <laughs> it's like, okay, you you didn't think of everything. I'm like, yeah, show, show Omega level power. That's that's what was missing from the OG one. I didn't see the Omega levels that you saw in this one. And 
I loved it. I loved it. I'm starting to see why people hold Magneto and Doom on a whole different pedestal as far as Marvel villains are concerned. Yes. And with the way that he talks, the way he presents himself, and the power threat that he has with the intelligence that is natural to him. Yeah. There's a reason people go around and be like, you're not going to disrespect Magneto. You can disrespect certain elements of certain shows and certain movies that have happened. But that's not how the character is. And that's this. What we're seeing right here with X-Men 97 is a personification of what Magneto people, should be. People forget that they had storylines with Magneto where he was A1. He killed Apocalypse. Him. By himself. In a storyline, he murdered Apocalypse. It took him a minute, but he did. That's no easy feat. Not a lot of people can say that. Cable been trying to do this for how long? <laughs> <I'm in it. laughs> so come on yeah we don't disrespect Magneto and I'm glad that now he's the center leader maybe of the team I'm still saying Cyclops is still going to be the leader I think Cyclops is just going to be leader. there yeah he's still going to be giving, they're still going to listen to Cyclops over Magneto but with Magneto being front and center I like how they have shown his power potential that, and that's what was missing from the original. Everybody who knew X-Men knew how powerful he was. You finally got a glimpse of what he could do in the second episode. And that, for me, is why the series in episode two shines so much more than episode one as a new viewer. Is there anything else in particular that we're saying? Because as of now, we're saying it's entertaining both for the old audience and for the new audience. We're both I'm, in agreement that say, this is going to yeah. be good right now. First two episodes in, I am hooked. Yeah. I'm happier than I were, was when I found out they were doing it. Uh, I'm definitely hooked. Uh, I definitely, you know, can't wait to watch all of this as it rolls out. Uh, we still got more characters to see. So with that, we know Cave was going to make an appearance at some point. We know the Nightcrawler is going to make an appearance. At Doctor some Strange point. is rumored to show so up somewhere between Let season one and two. Strange rumored to show. Uh, Iceman was already referenced and stuff in the original picture of the. Can we talk about that? Remember when I said that this wasn't the original, the o, the OG X-Men cartoon, they weren't the original? I loved how they had the picture of the original team. That was your original X-Men. And I loved how they gave them a little homage. And I was like, thank you. I see them. And it didn't show it just once. They showed it like three or four times. Just so yeah, you they know. showed it when it was put up, and they showed it when Magneto picked it up and put it back on the wall. No, they showed it. They showed it when they put it up. They showed it when they broke it. They showed it when Magneto picked it up. Then they showed it again when he put it on the wall. Yeah. I mean, so, Kevin hey. Feige did come out and say if he wasn't going to get the original cast and they weren't going to get the original opening, this show wasn't going to be greenlit. So he can tell already where his mind's at. And right now, as of two episodes in, I know it's early on, the product is reflecting a very high standard, which is. Very, very and nice I, to see I will say it's too. it's pretty high, but look, we can't act like everything in here was good. There were some things that I particularly didn't like. I don't know if, how y'all would feel about it. Sure, we'll see. But for me, and this is just me being picky, I hate Bishop's haircut. I prefer Bishop with the dreads. I, I, I you give him the dreads, you you could give him back his mullet. I don't care. This spiky Bart Simpson looking thing. I don't, it's not for me. Um, I wish they would actually get to a point of making Cyclops' visor hands free. They did that at one point, and I don't know why they just don't leave it hands free. Because doing this, you it's know, a it's, it's a handicap in battle. Um, I hate Gambit's look, all of it, just every, every bit of that I hate. I, I don't like the hair, I don't know. I just don't like it. See, some of the animation is off for me. The it's animation like again, yeah. The animation is is off. Um, the thing I hate the most, and it's just me being from the south. Wolverine I talks like a pirate. No, I can deal with that because it's still gruff and it's still it's it's okay. I absolutely hate Rogue's accent. I hate it. I don't want her to talk. It's. <laughs> It's annoying to me. I know people from the Bayou, and they don't sound like that. The Southern Belt, Southern horrible. accent's been gone for a while. That's that's a that's a horrible accent for Rogue. The go back and watch the OG Brent. I know you hate it, but go back and watch the original X Men. I, I, I just gave up on it. Just There's go watch the exit. Pressing. Go watch the original and listen to Rogue's accent in that one. 
That is a Southern Bell accent. This one, somebody hooked, you know, jacked up on cold medicine or something. I don't know. It's it's horrible. That's my biggest gripe. I, I just can't do that. I can't do it. I can't. Will, some of your gripes? Uh, no, I mean, he gave us some on the head. Uh, again, it's just trying to watch where everybody's taking place and what's going on. Uh, little things and stuff. It's like. All right, well, uh, there's little things that, you know, I do like. Like when Cyclops was playing basketball, he had his visor on because it stays clipped to his face. Like you're playing basketball, you get rough. He's wearing his eyeglasses. Those are going to come off. He's going to blast somebody. So little stuff that Much. Makes, I like so that. But like when they're going out to the club, it's like freaking you get, Gambit's still in his outfit. You couldn't – like he had him in like some regular clothes back at the house. Logan had on his regular outfit. Yeah, like, freaking, you know, some some of that – you like. Situational awareness is with that you you don't want to be recognized as X all the time. Granted, they're more in the mainstream now. It seems like everybody knows who they are because again, they're sitting on the panel at the uh, courthouse during all the scenes and all this stuff's going on, which is fine. But uh, again, I just want to see where where they're going to go with the rest of the characters as far mm-hmm. as giving them their shine. So Beast didn't get a lot of shine in this one. Uh, he had he had a couple moments like that, but uh, well, I think we'll get a bit more from Beast. I mean, he is a secondary X Man to me. He's not, you know, one of the. He's he's not one of the most primitive. Even though he was an OG member, like the version of Oracle, like you're there but you're not. Yeah, right. I mean, besides him being furry and agile and super strong and you know highly intelligent, you're not going to put him in the field that much. Yeah, I just want to buy things and stuff to the team as far as uh getting Storm's powers back. Like that's where I think he's going to shine. Yeah, that's where he's going to focus. So, and then we we'll, hopefully we'll find out where well, maybe Storm went back to Africa to be, you know, get back with her tribe. We won't know. I love her look, by the way. Oh, yeah. that is impeccable. That. that is one of one. Yeah, that's that's. I think out of all the looks that she's had, the mohawk with this with the outfit, this outfit because she also has a leather, short leather Morlock type of, type of outfit that she wears with the mohawk. I like this look better. Yeah, and I think this was the better look to bring in. And I think that's basically all we've got for today. We've got tons more great stuff upcoming. Be sure to hit that love for the subscribe button, especially if you listen for 22 minutes. Lord knows you should probably have just hit that button and hit that like, dislike, left a comment by now. Just letting you guys know as Iron Man sucks. progress, that is also true. But as the Bad Batch slowly <laughs> winds to a close, you know, I may stay up late still and cover some X-Men 97. If you guys want to watch some live stream, we'll be on Twitch and on YouTube covering that. I've been Brent, Tony, Man the Myth Marvel. We'll see you guys in the next one. Iron Man. Pew, 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 pew.